Hong Wei Lin, a PhD student at the University of Virginia. Today I'm going to present our recent work on detecting adversarial examples. This work is co-advised by Professor David Evans and Professor Yan Junqi. Okay. So as we all know, deep learning technique has been extremely successful on image classification task. So initially, I believe that deep learning might have found a good way to duplicate human vision. Unfortunately, I was wrong. So researchers have discovered that deep learning models uh, work differently on adversarial, uh, adversarial examples. So starting from the Harriton digit one uh, on, on the left side, an adversary is able to craft uh, adversarial perturbations so that in state-of-the-art deep learning models would predict arbitrary uh, predictions. This could be a huge concern if we use uh, deep learning models in the security sensitive task because uh, they couldn't generate uh, uh, reliable predictions on the attack. Uh, if we could train a perfect uh, model that could uh, duplicate our human vision, it would have solved the problem. Unfortunately, um, the uh, uh, cognitive scientists and the computer vision experts told us that uh, we are still very far from there. So instead, researchers have, found, uh, have developed some techniques to make it harder to find adversarial examples. Uh, however, subsequent studies have pointed out that most of the existing defense techniques uh, uh, could, be, uh, could be bypassed uh, effectively uh, with, with some new techniques. So the, the answer is may never end. In this work, uh, we propose to change the game with feature squeezing, uh, which is a general framework that reduces the search space available for an adversary and detects adversarial examples. So in this talk, uh, I will uh, introduce the general framework of feature squeezing, followed by the two feature squeezers we have explored in our paper. And we evaluate the detection performance on the two different threat models, the oblivious adversary and the adaptive adversary. First, let me introduce the general framework of feature squeezing. So initially, without any defense technique, we would uh, directly take the prediction output of a deep learning model. And in the feature squeezing framework, uh, we will pre-process the input Im image with a feature squeezer, uh, which generates a second prediction. The, a feature squeezer coalesces a simple, uh, the similar samples into a single one. It, it barely changes the uh, image semantics. So for an, a legitimate image, image input, the two predictions should be the same. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the adversarial perturbations might be distracted by feature squeezing operation. So the two predictions are of uh, adversarial, av adversarial image could be very different. Here we employ the L1 distance to model the difference between the, uh, the two predictions. If the L1 distance is la larger than a pre-selected threshold value T, uh, the framework issue an alert that the, the input could be, uh, is likely to be an adversarial uh, example. This framework is uh, simple and straightforward. However, we haven't found a single squeezer uh, that is universally uh, effective on all the existing adversarial uh, methods. So uh, we just uh, introduced multiple squeezers in this framework. In, in that way, uh, we will get multiple L1 scores. We use the uh, max function to aggregate the, uh, those L1 scores. And if the maximum L1 score is larger than a pre-selected threshold value, T, then the framework will issue uh, an, an alert. Next, I will introduce the two feature squeezers uh, we have uh, uh, investigated in our paper, bit depth reduction and spatial smoothing. And let's start with uh, bit depth reduction. So in the signal processing field, the, the continuous uh, uh, natural signals are typically quantized into the uh, discrete representations. For images, we often use 8-bit integers to encode each pixel, uh, which contains 256 uh, levels. Uh, we have found that for many uh, image classification tasks, we don't have to use the 8-bit encoding. The fewer bits will work the same, uh, and it reduces the search space available for an adversary. So let's take a look at the example on the right side. So starting from the Harrington digit one uh, at the top, we have generated an adversary example at the bottom. And if we reduce the encoding uh, bigs from eight to one, we will find that the resulting image is very similar to the original one. 
And on the other hand, most of the adversarial perturbations uh, have been um, filtered by the bit depth reduction. And on this page, we, we, sh we showed more adversarial images. Uh, we generated these images with four different attacks, the fast gradient sum method, the basic iterative method, and the two Carini and Wagner attacks. Uh, so it's clear that the bit depth reduction is effective in eliminating the adversarial perturb perturbations, and it helps the target model to uh, predict the, the labels correctly. The, accuracy, uh, uh, the model accuracy results further confirm our observation. So uh, let's take a look at the MNET data set first. Uh, the first line is the baseline without a feature squeezing. And in this way, the model is vulnerable to the adversarial examples. And the, the accuracy uh, on the adversarial example is as low as 13%. And using one bit depth reduction, the, adversary, uh, the accuracy on adversarial examples is increased to 62%. And uh, on, on the other hand, the accuracy on the legitimate images um, are very similar. The results on the image net data set are similar to this. And uh, the next uh, feature squeezer we have investigated in, in our paper is spatial smoothing, which includes the medium filter and the non-local means. So medium filter is a well-known image uh, smoothing technique in the image uh, processing field. It runs a sliding window over every pixel of an image, and the center of pixels would be, would be replaced with the median value of its neighbors. Many papers have uh, confirmed that median, the median filter is very effective in eliminating the salt and pepper noise, uh, which is shown as the uh, example on the right side. And the second um, smoothing method is, is, pro, uh, is called non-local means. So there are two major differences compared with uh, medium filter. First, the non-local means operates on, uh, on a uh, patch of pixels instead of a single pixel. And th the second is that uh, it takes use of the uh, similar patches even if the, the patch is, uh, is not the neighbors of the target. target. <coughs> Here we use the uh, image uh, on, from the c pattern data set to explain how the non-local means works. Uh, we want to smooth the, tar tar the target uh, patch P. And we have got two reference patches, Q1 and Q2. And here, uh, uh, because the Q1 is, looks similar to P, so the weight on Q1 uh, would be larger than that uh, of Q2. And, and the, 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 the target patch will be rep uh, replaced with the weighted mean of all the, sim uh, all the reference patches. Uh, because there could be uh, uh, a lot of reference patches, so uh, we, we often li limit the search of the reference patches into a smaller region. Uh, here we use some real examples to show uh, the effect of the, uh, these two uh, smoothing techniques. So uh, uh, using the same image, we have uh, generated two different adversarial examples using the uh, basic iterative method and JSMA. And the, the ground truth label is air plan, and, but, but uh, the adversarial examples made the model pretty, uh, with the uh, wrong labels. And using medi medium filter, people find that uh, it, it smooths all the three, three uh, pictures to the similar ones. And the, the, uh, it's, uh, particularly, it's very effective in eliminating the JSMA perturbations uh, because it's similar to the salt and pepper noise. And for the, for the middle one, uh, even though it, couldn't, it, it didn't help to help the model to predict the correct label, but uh, the, the prediction is uh, indeed different from the original one. So our feature sequencing can still detect the, the difference and, and detect as an adversary example. And the non-local means also smooths the images. And we could find that it, it it preserves uh, more edges for, of the images, and it, it brings a, a more smoother background. And all the predictions are, are, are correct uh, after we perform this non-local means filter. The accuracy results uh, further confirm our observations. So uh, in, in the baseline, without any uh, feature squeezers, the, the uh, Accuracy on adversary examples is as low as two percent, and using the uh, either uh, 
images uh, smoothing method, uh, the accuracy of adversarial examples is increased to 68% or 57%. And the accuracy on the legitimate images are all very similar. And there are, there are other potential feature squeezing methods that could fit in our general framework, which will be interesting to investigate in the future. And here I will present the uh, evaluation results on detection using the three feature squeezers which I introduced earlier. We conducted the experiment on three image data sets. We considered seven different attacks, the untargeted attacks and as well as the targeted attacks. And the detector is trained on a balanced data set and we report the validation results. We first considered a threat model that the adversary knows everything about the target model but is not aware of our detector. We run the feature squeezers and aggregate the L1 scores using the max function. The histogram here uh, represents the distribution of the maximum L1 score on the MNIST data set. We can roughly tell that the adversary examples have higher L1, L1 scores, and the training process is just to select a threshold value according to some constraints. So here we select a threshold so that the false positive rate is below 5% on the training data set. We report the detection rates of each attack on the MNIST data set. We found that the bit depth reduction is more effective on the L infinite attacks and L2 attacks. On the other hand, uh, the median, median filter is more effective on the L0 attacks. Combining, uh, the, combining the two, Com uh, combining the two squeezers generate a detection rate that's higher than any single squeezer. So if, if we can get it from, from the last line. The aggregated results on all the three data sets are available on this table. We report the threshold values, the false positive rates, the detection rates, as well as the ROC, AOC scores. So we, we, we found that uh, we have got the best results on the MNIST data set uh, with the ROC, AOC score very close to one. And we might be able to increase the results on CIFAR 10 and ImageNet using other squeezers in the future. Next, uh, we, will, we will explore if a feature squeezing based de detector is robust against an adaptive adversary who knows everything about the target model as well as our detector. We introduced the adaptive CW2 attack. The original CW2 attack uh, basically has two terms in the objective function, the misclassification term and the distance term. And a modern solver is used to search a perturbation that minimizes the ob objective function. The adaptive CW2 attack has one more term, uh, which is the L1 score produced by our de detector. To the best of our knowledge, this is the state of the adaptive adversary technique against feature squeezing. We ran the attack against our detector and found that it often generates adversary examples that are both through the target model and evade our detector. It is not surprising because the CW attack is unbounded on the perturbation amount. If we take a look at the images, we will find that some of them are unrecognizable to human eyes. In order to understand this, the success rate of an adaptive adversary in a more practical setting, we create the perturbations and report the, the actual success rates. We found that even with unbounded perturbations, the success rates are much lower than 100%. If we create the perturbations with a common absolute value, 0.3, the success rates would, would not be higher than 1%. Our further investigation shows that the randomization helps defend against the adaptive adversary. We replace the deterministic binary filter with a randomized one in which the threshold value follows a normal distribution. Accordingly, we strengthen uh, the adaptive adversary by attacking an ensemble of three detectors with three different thresholds, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0.6. The results show that uh, randomization makes the adversary more difficult to generate adversary examples. The adversary has to introduce larger perturbations for evading, evading our detector. 
In conclusion, feature squeezing hardens deep learning models by reducing the search space available to an adversary. It gives advantages to the defense side in the arms race with the adaptive adversary. You can read more details on our paper. And thanks for listening to the talk. I'm ready to take your questions. Lawrence Fernandez, University of Washington. Um, so you, you, in your slides, you showed experiments for MNIST with the adaptive uh, attacker. Um, um, and I'm, cu I'm curious whether you ran experiments on ImageNet or CIFAR-10, uh, where the attacker has more room to hide uh, the, 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 the perturbations. Sorry, do you mean the adaptive adversary? Or? Yes, yes. Uh, so we haven't conducted experiments on CIFAR-10 and ImageNet. So we just got the results on the MNIST data set. Do, do you expect that there would be large distortions if you ran it on ImageNet, if you were to take a guess? Yeah, I, I, th I think it, it, it is possible, but uh, it depends on the detector. So here we show the, the final results of our uh, detectors on three different data sets. So we can find a major difference is that uh, the detector on the MNIST data set has a very uh, small threshold value. So that may, makes the adaptive adversary very hard to find uh, uh, adversary example that both fool the target model and evade our detector. But the threshold values on CIFAR-10 and image that uh, data sets are much higher than that. So uh, we hope that we can, uh, in the future work, we can find other feature squeezes so that we, we can get a better performance on these two data sets. And after that, uh, it will be worthwhile to evaluate if it, it is uh, robust against adaptive adversary. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, great to see defense papers on this topic. Uh, so I was wondering, do you have a sense for whether these uh, defenses would work against physically realized adversarial samples? So like somebody wearing glasses to fool a face recognition system, because I think the perturbations there is, is more realistic, and these sort of feature smoothing techniques uh, may not work there. Do you have a sense for that? Uh, yeah, this is a great question. So yeah, we, we, we didn't have that, that threat model, but I think it would be very uh, worthwhile to explore in the future work. OK, um, a follow-up question. So uh, it would be good to see comparison with prior work. So did you compare with Magnet? Uh, from CCS last year? Uh, yes, yes we do. We have the uh, details in, on our paper. Um, so uh, it, your technique works better? Uh, sorry? Your technique works better than Magnet? Uh, so uh, uh, we conducted an experiment on MNIST and CIFA-10. I think uh, the results on MNIST is similar, and on CIFA-10, our, our result is better than theirs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I remember from our paper. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's thank our speaker.